LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions looking pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And liftoff. Got speed Endeavor and crew two. Copy one alpha. Endeavor launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on crew two now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. Vehicle is pitching down range. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls on first stage performance so far. seconds into the second rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Falcon 9 will be throttling down the nine Merlin engines shortly here in preparation for in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And there's that call out for the throttle down. Maximum dynamic pressure, max Q, is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. So throttling down does help us pass. Throttling down helps us pass through this period, which should be coming here shortly. Max Q. There's that call out that we have just passed through max Q. Stage one, throttle up. And one we can bravo. Now... Copy, one bravo. All right, one Bravo is the second abort mode on the first stage. The first stage continues to fire for two minutes, 35 seconds. One and a half minutes into today's flight. Falcon 9 now traveling at more than 1,500 miles an hour. Impact engine chill started. All right, the engine chill for the second stage single Merlin engine has started. About 30 more seconds of the first stage firing to bring our four astronauts into orbit. Now from here coming up in about 20 some seconds, we're going to have three major milestones. We'll have shutdown of the nine Merlin engines. We're beginning to throttle them down. We will then get stage, stage separation, one, down. and then we will get ignition of the second stage engine. To two hey, Alpha. Nico. Copy, two Alpha. Confirmed. Acquisition signal right. In the ignition. And we have ignition of the second stage. You see the green flash of that T-TEB fluid. The ex extent expansion nozzle on the second stage Merlin vacuum glowing that bright red that we like to see. Good performance on the second stage so far. And on the left side of your screen, we saw the uh, exhaust of the second stage engine streaming past the first stage as the grid fins are coming out. We also briefly had a view of the lights of Central Florida in the background. Currently, the first stage is continuing to coast up to Apogee. It's unpowered. It'll reach a peak height and then begin to descend back down toward the Earth's atmosphere, where it will light three engines to slow down in preparation for what will be a landing burn on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the grid fins are deployed. Right now, the first stage Dragon pulsing. SpaceX trajectory nominal. We're pulsing the thrusters. Signal of Bermuda. Copy, nominal trajectory. We hear a call out from the crew, nominal trajectory. So we're beginning to move the first stage into position so it can do the entry burn.
four minutes, 15 seconds into today's flight. Second stage propelling our four astronauts up the eastern seaboard. We'll
All right, we're still enjoying some of the views from the International Space Station, looking at Crew 2 as it continues to make its approach. It successfully performed an approach out of plane burn to set it up for the next major burn, approach initiation. Uh, and so we're just in the process of the, uh, the astronauts getting suited up and ready for that burn. We're just about under two and a half hours from docking and the crew uh, is getting ready to get back into their spacesuits for rendezvous and docking. Now the integrated operations uh, have begun and SpaceX flight controllers closely coordinate each maneuver with the NASA flight teams in Houston. Uh, ground controllers initiate and monitor preparations for approach, including establishing communications with the station and initializing the spacecraft's navigation sensors to prepare for autonomous docking. Their waypoint zero. What you're seeing now are the navigation lights on Dragon. The blinking is the uh, navigation light you can see on the forward end of Dragon, uh, exposed by the open nose cone. And you can see the uh, green and uh, red lights there, green uh, denoting the starboard side and uh, red denoting the port side, so the view you're seeing is an upside-down view. Again, Dragon is approaching from underneath the station and will swing up and out in front of it to align with the docking axis at the forward port of the International Space Station. That's about two and a half minutes to go until it converges with Waypoint 1. And as a reminder, Dragon is flying autonomously, so they aren't using those display panels to fly Dragon. They're just using them to monitor uh, each step of the way. So the crew is basically just patiently waiting until they dock with the station. Now seeing Dragon in, in a better view, a lot more clear now that it's uh, only 240 meters away. You can see the nose cone clearly uh, deployed, extended uh, towards the space-facing side or, or zenith side. A really good zoomed-in uh, view, and you could almost make out those four bulkhead thrusters uh, on the forward portion of the Dragon capsule. There you go. The Cronus is uh, adjusting the aperture of the station <laughs> cameras. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Approach one and soft capture extension will begin shortly. Dragon will continue to a waypoint two with the additional lighting assessment occurring at 110 meters as previously noted. For awareness, if sunlight results in the loss of the Dragonite geo filters, Dragon will autonomously retreat back to waypoint one, remaining on closed loop control using the time of flight filters. I'll copy.